Oh, Bo, over here, other side. Right here. Got you. Uh, obviously, a big marquee event, UFC 300, is upon us. So I guess, uh, what are the emotions now that, you know, fight camp's over, you just got to focus on weighing in and fighting? Yeah, now uh, is the least fun part and then the most fun part, right? You know, all uh, rolled into a week. So I feel really excited to compete, obviously. It's been a little bit of time since I was able to get in the cage. And so, you know, I'm just very grateful, very appreciative of this opportunity. And I think, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go out there and be myself and put, him, put on an amazing performance. Well, you had mentioned that, you know, it's been a while since we had seen you. Were you expecting a call sooner? Or do you think they were trying to hold you for like a big event like this? Well, it, it was part of my plan to take a little bit of time off. Um, you know, at that point last year, uh, with uh, my last fight, I had taken five fights in 365 days and just been on a basically a year year's worth of training camps. And I wanted to take some time and focus on my development and you know, training for a fight and just training to get better and improve are uh, a little different. And so I think it, it made sense. And then when I was looking at the timeline for what events were coming up, you know, this fit in perfectly uh, with that plan. Well, I know you famously said, you know, you want to be on pay-per-view main cards, but I guess people were a little surprised given the amount of marquee names at UFC 300 that you were still on the pay-per-view. So were you surprised that they put you above guys like Yuri and Alex and everything? Yeah, I didn't expect it. I think that um, it's a big honor for me to be where I'm at on the card and just to be on this card in general because there's so many amazing fighters and so many guys that have a ton of experience and who, um, are just doing big things in the sport. And so I feel like it says a lot about, um, about me, about the UFC and our, our plans. And I think they align. And I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm just grateful to be where I'm at and grateful to, uh, you know, have this platform to go do my thing. When they brought Cody Brunson's name to you, you know, another guy with an extensive wrestling background, not at your level, but he obviously wrestled it at, for most of his life. So what did you make of when his name when they approached you? Yeah, I was excited for that. I think that, um, just getting to compete against uh, another wrestler is a new challenge for me. Everybody that I've fought thus far, you know, hasn't had a wrestling background. And so um, this will, I think, present different problems for me to solve in the fight. And um, that's going to be a big part of my development is just continuing to get different looks and improve and feel different things in the cage. So, you know, hopefully he can uh, give me a little resistance in there and I'll figure it out. He was in here earlier, and he said he was glad he was getting you now. Like, he thinks right now is the perfect time to get you because you're, you haven't developed quite as m m some of the other fighters in the division. Do you think he's kind of overlooking you, or is he just kind of talking that to kind of sell the fight? I think that makes perfect sense what he's saying because, you know, I'm only going to improve and get better, right? Like, you know, I think if it were up to him, he would have loved to get me, like, a year ago, right? So, you know, everybody knows that um, my capability and what I was able to do in wrestling, and I think they obviously – assume that that'll translate over to fighting, and it has so far. So for him to say that, I think, makes perfect sense. And you know, I think for me, it's just continually improving and moving forward. And you know, my goal isn't to win. I, I obviously want to win this fight, but my goal is to be the pound for pound number one fighter in the world and UFC champion. So you know, this is a, uh, a part of that process. And you were obviously in the headlines for you know, your comments about Jordan, Burrow, and everything. So I guess, what's the wrestling community uh, re reaction to that and the reception to your comments? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I definitely expected the wrestling community uh, to be maybe taken aback by it or a little surprised, just given you know his standing in the community. Um, but I've gotten a lot of support from people um, that are actually like in the community that that you know wrestlers, coaches, people that are that are in it, in it, not just fans that are kind of watching from the outside. And uh, everybody is kind of on the same page as me. So that that was interesting to me. I, it's not something that I expected, but. Uh, yeah, I just pretty much was frustrated with what he had to say and let that be known. The final one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Yeah, you know, both fights uh, are going to be amazing contests. I think um, those guys are extremely skilled in what they do. And, um, you know, looking forward as a fan of the sport to watching both those fights, um, definitely uh, I would say, like, kind of dream matchups, if, if you will, um, for guys that go out there and they're going to get after it and they just put on amazing shows. So, you know, I'll be tuning in probably from home at that point. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, excited to watch those fights. Bo, uh, right here. Um, you talk about, you know, how the UFC is positioning you on this card, what Cody says about your potential and things like that. It seems like everyone knows what you can be capable of, and maybe the only thing that could stop you is yourself at this point. So how do you keep 
grounded and make sure you're training properly, dieting, focusing, all these things and not letting any of the outside stuff seep in? I think it starts with why I'm doing what I'm doing. Now, I'm not doing any of this for outside attention or for money or you know, any of this uh, external kind of stimulus, external reward. It's all because I love it. You know, at the end of the day, I could probably go do a lot of different things, a lot of things that are easier than being an MMA fighter. And, uh, but this is what I'm choosing to do. And so obviously take that very seriously. I'm very motivated, very disciplined. And you know, that's probably a uh, testament to the people that I've been able to be around, coaches, teammates, uh, my dad, uh, people that have had a, a positive impact on me and been good examples for me. And uh, yeah, basically, you know, to sum it up, I do this because I love it and not for any of the extra extracurricular stuff. Is it important, though, that you keep, I guess, setting new goalposts and keep finding ways to be pushed? Because, you know, complaint, complacency can be like the worst thing for fighters in the sport. Um, do you see that and know that there needs to be collaboration with the UFC to continue this in a way that keeps you focused with everything you just said there? You know, I think that, yeah, there's, there's definitely collaboration. I feel like when I look at the UFC and myself, um, I see us as we're, we're on the same team, you know, we, we want the same things. And uh, so, you know, that's something that I think has uh, been a really positive relationship thus far and we've been aligned. And, uh, you know, I think that will continue moving forward. Um, that being said, I feel like um, I'm fighting better and better guys every single fight, which is good. It's what I want. And I want to continue, you know, fighting better guys. And, you know, soon enough I'll be fighting ranked guys fighting guys, you know, for the belt and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. You can find yourself anywhere between minus 2,000 and minus 3,000. Good value? Yeah, I, I think the math checks out um, to me. Um, I, if I'm being honest, any, any number on me, like, is basically just free money at this point. So um, I uh, have had some people asking me, you know, predictions and things like that for the fight. And it, it's really tough to predict the fight, but... I know I'm going to win. <laughs> That's the only thing I'm really sure of. Hey, Bo, and just sort of piggybacking on that, um, do you feel like you have the most pressure on the card because of the betting odds, right? Uh, you look at some of the other fights, no one's like a minus 2,000 favorite. Do you, do you feel like you have the most pressure? You know, pressure is such an interesting thing because it's, it's really just all of your perception. And all the pressure that I feel comes from uh, internal, you know, it comes from myself. And, you know, I, I put pressure on myself because I love what I do, I care about it, and I train really hard. And really, that's, uh, that's all I feel, you know. I think that um, my, my coach uh, at Penn State, Kale Sanderson, he, he's talked to us about pressure a lot. And, um, you know, to sum it up, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to feel pressure. It's just not good to be nervous about that. So for me, I, I know I'm going to feel this pressure because I choose that. And uh, I'm the one that signs the contract that decides that I'm going to go out there and fight. And I do it because I love it. Who did you get to work with for this camp uh, leading into the fight with Brundage? Um, fortunately, this camp, um, I've had a lot of really good training partners. Um, obviously, my two guys at home in Pennsylvania are Anthony Kassar and Musa al Sulaimani, both uh, national champions, one in wrestling, one in boxing. So high-level guys and you know, two of my best friends. So those are guys that I'm working with on a daily basis. And then I was also grateful that I was able to go down to Florida, train with some really high-level guys um, down there at American Top Team, Johnny Eblen, uh, Marvin Vittori, you know, are, are a few names that I was able to get some rounds in with. And so really, you know, feel like I have a, I feel like I had a really good camp and feel well prepared. Does that give you confidence, obviously, working with a guy like Eblin, who, you know, Bellator champ and, you know, competing at a high level, Vittori's a ranked middleweight. Like, is that a good way to kind of gauge where you are in, in the division? Yeah, I think so. You know, for me, uh, development's very important. It's important for me to push myself against the best guys. And I think that, you know, obviously it's cliche, but people talk about, you know, train hard and fight easy. And th that's, that is the way I see it, though. That's been the way I've seen it since I was a kid. And I always, you know, traveled to get the best training partners when I was in middle school and high school. And then going to Penn State for college, obviously I had the best training partners in the world. And, uh, you know, I'm taking that same mindset into MMA and I want to work with the best guys, best coaches. And I feel fortunate and grateful that uh, they're, you know, wanting to work with me as well. And if all goes well, like you're saying, and you get a finish, and it's another impressive performance, is this sort of the last fight you think before we start getting you to fight maybe like a ranked opponent or like a more notable opponent in the division? Do you feel like this is kind of the last one? It's possible. You know, I think that um, that's a conversation between uh, 
myself and the UFC, and we'll figure out uh, what we want to do. But I'm not in a rush. You know, I'm only 28 years old. I just turned 28, and I, I got a, a lot, a uh, lot of uh, more time to continue to improve and develop and get better. But again, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. The goal is to be the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. You know, and I want to continue to fight better and better guys. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, focus on the improvement aspect of it. Like I need to get better uh, to get to where I want to be. And so whatever the development looks like and the process, then that's what, that's what it'll be. And just last one for me, uh, Hamzat Chimaev now looks like he's a mainstay at 185. He's fighting Robert Whitaker coming up. I know this is down the line, but you got to be a bit excited about that potential matchup just with both of your styles. Definitely excited about that matchup. You know, I think um, obviously Hamzat's a little bit ahead of me in terms of position in the organization and rankings, but I feel like, you know, that's a matchup that a lot of people want to see. And, uh, you know, that fight with Whitaker is going to be an amazing fight. Two guys that are competing at a very high level, and you know, I'm looking forward to watching it and definitely looking forward to uh, that fight down the line. Bo, hey, Bo. Here. When, uh, when you were eight years old, you told your parents that you wanted cauliflower ear. Is that a moment where you know you're going to dedicate your whole life to the world of combat? I think, you know, it was. I think that I was just around it so much. Um, my granddad wrestled in college. You know, he was a wrestling coach. My dad wrestled his whole life, was a wrestling coach. And so it was just something that that's what you're around, right? And the guys that I looked up to were you know, high school wrestlers, college wrestlers, and they had it. And so for me, um, that was just my path. And, and th again, there, there was other things I could have done, and it was never like something I was forced into, but I felt like it was my choice and what I loved. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll be involved in, in combat sports um, forever. You know, even even when I'm done competing, I think that I'll I'll coach at some capacity or be involved somehow. And touching again, touching up again on the main card placement. I know you're probably more aware than anyone that some people weren't really too fan of that. So does that add an extra chip on your shoulder or motivation to go out there and make an even bigger statement? You know, it's interesting because I guess first off, it's not really me that decides that. I know that a lot of people, you know, pull up the quote of me saying like. You know, I'm, I'm a main card guy and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like that um, at the end of the day, the UFC made a business decision and it made sense for me to be on the main card. Um, that being said, as far as the opinions of others, they're not super relevant to me. I feel like um, those are going to ebb and flow. And I'm you know, confident that in a year or two, once I've uh, established myself more and built my reputation in this sport more, that people will have uh, will think it's a no-brainer and look back on it and, you know, it'll make a lot more sense. Last one for me, a fellow fighter under the same management, Ilya Topuria, had his big title win in Anaheim a couple of months ago. What did you make of that performance? So happy for Ilya. You know, he's a he's a guy that I have been watching for a long time um, and just, you know, you could see it as a, as a student of the sport, I could see it coming almost um, just with his skills and his mindset and being able to be around him. Um, you could tell that he just had that, he just had a championship aura around him, you know, probably even before he got into the UFC. And so uh, I was so happy to kind of see his dreams be realized. And it's definitely motivational for me seeing somebody uh, come up and, uh, you know, achieve his goals that, you know, it's now I feel like I'm, I'm the next guy to go do that. Hey, Bo, I was wondering how has being a father changed any of your mindset and just that approach to competition now, just having that, you know, proverbial something more to fight for? You know, it's interesting. Um, I think that for me, I've always been very competitive. I'm always somebody that I'll do uh, whatever I need to do in the competition to, to win. And, um, you know, having a son, I feel like more than anything, I, I just want to be a good dad to him. I don't think it really like gives me any extra motivation. I already feel fully motivated um, internally, but I definitely feel excited just to to spend time with him and get to know him as he grows and gets older and you know I, I want to be a good fighter and uh, you know I have big goals um, within fighting but it's more important for me to to be a good dad so whatever that looks like it could be you know outside fighting that's my priority. Two-parter what was it like taking him to his first wrestling match and two have you already thought about what college you'd like to make him an offer? Uh, that's funny um, I was, it was a really cool, you know, kind of surreal moment um, to be able to bring him to a Penn State match at, uh, I guess at that point he would have been, you know, two months old and, uh, you know, just, just a cool, cool experience. Obviously I had a lot of great memories um, 
at Rec Hall in the in the Penn State uh, arena, and um, to bring him there was special. And as far as you know, him going to school or what he's going to do, I think that uh, I would like I would love it if he chose to do something different than me, just because I feel like you know he can be his own person and figure figure out what he likes. And if it's wrestling, then that's great. I'll obviously support him, but um, you know I definitely want to leave leave that up to him and let him figure that out. You mentioned Penn State. Real quickly, what are your thoughts on them breaking the uh, tournament record scoring points that's been since like 1997? Yeah, amazing. You know, I think the team this year at Penn State was you know, extremely special. A lot of special individuals, you know, comprised that team. You know, had two, obviously you mentioned the uh, team scoring record, but also, you know, two four-time NCAA champions um, in the same year, which there's probably no way that's ever going to happen again. And so, you know, for me, I'm just grateful to be able to uh, be around those guys and still be in there and, and training with these guys on a daily basis. They obviously help me a ton in keeping my wrestling sharp, and I'm grateful that I, I just get to be around high-level people. It's something that I feel like, you know, is, uh, is a big blessing. Bo? Uh, can I get one more? You are very dialed in. I heard you on the Rogan podcast. You're very regimented. Uh, uh, very wise beyond your years with your schedule and your training and all of that. Uh, Cody was in here. Uh, he was saying that some people around him, they, they said that you're like the Jesus of Jesus Christ of MMA. Uh, I, I believe that as you keep climbing the ladder, people will try to pick at that cool, calm psyche. Uh, one, what do you think about that? And two, can you walk on water? Well, I definitely, uh, I don't love that um, comparison as a Christian, you know. I think it's, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really feel like that about myself at all. Um, I think that I'm just trying to do my best out here. And, uh, you know, the, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little confused by, by the question, I guess. But uh, I feel like, yeah. I, I don't want Are you prepared for people to, as you're climbing right. the ladder, to pick at your, gotcha. your yeah, calm, yeah. cool demeanor? Yeah, yeah, I feel fine, you know, with uh, people saying whatever they want to say. Of course, you know, people are going to try to get a rise out of me or, you know, say things that to, to throw me off. But I'm just trying to go out there and accomplish what I want to accomplish. And if what, however they want to go about it is, is really irrelevant to me. It makes no difference. And you know, people want to sell the fight. People want to build the fight up. And I get that. But for me, um, no matter what's said in the lead up or the fight week, like we're going to get locked in the cage, so that's what I'm focused on. And anything that uh, is important will be uh, will come to light right in that moment.